Who's got it better than us? Nobody! Nobody! Who's got it better than us? Hi, I'm Bonnie Jill Ackland. And I'm Melissa Jacobs. And you're watching another segment of Four Downs. Let's talk about this bounce back win that the Niners so desperately need. Because I think a lot of Niners fans started to get a little bit nervous. You as well. We were talking about what's going on. We thought we'd slide right into Minnesota and take that win. And uh, I think that was a problem. We thought it was going to be an easy win and didn't expect to... Uh, the Vikings had come out so strong, so went into New York, and uh, we finally saw that our defense is back on track and uh, that we could get it done, and we actually shut them out. Yeah, I guess it was the Youngstown magic again, right? <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, because we should clarify that we haven't, we took a, the bye week, or we took, the, we took our bye week last week because we don't like to do the show when we lose. <laughs> yeah, so we, that's how we took our bye week, yes. That's, that'll be our bye weeks when we lose. So we're glad we're back with you guys. Yeah, so we're, you know, I think we're in a very good uh, situation right now. I mean, there's a lot, so many positives that, that came out of that that Jets game. And, you know, just some interesting things to think about, kind of their use of Colin Kaepernick moving forward. Um, yeah, another thing that I want to talk about, though, is I feel like Smith does, your boy, Smith needs to work on being a little more accurate on the long passes. That's one thing that I think that we need to work on. But speaking of Kaepernick, that's our next question, too, is the usage of Colin Kaepernick a good move? And not only is it a good move for the future, but present, because if you notice, a lot of quarterbacks go down. We've been lucky enough that Alex Smith has been healthy. But if he was, I'm really confident in Kaepernick's skills. He obviously has his arm strength unbelievable, and we all know he can run. So if something was, God forbid, happened to Smith, um, I really am comfortable with Kaepernick you know, being able to uh, get it done. Yeah, well, I, I need to see him play a little bit more. I mean, it was really interesting that they brought him in and, and did that deep ball to Randy Moss. Wasn't that yeah. shocking? Great. <laughs> right. And I'm not saying I'm completely sold, sold on him, but I'm not scared to have him as our backup. Yeah, I think there's, I mean, Rex Grossman's a backup. There's worse, you know, there's potentially worse backups out there. <laughs> but, yes. that, you know, I called what, I called their sort of use of him against the Jets. I called it the, the mock Tebow playbook. Because, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but he, was, it's good to see what he can awesome. do. So I kind of like the fact that Harbaugh is putting him in there and maybe thinking about a future with him, you know, down the road. So Yeah, I, I hope, you know, I hope they infiltrate him more. I mean, it was certainly you know, a good place to do it in New York. And I think it'll be like a by opponent situation, but I think it definitely, it's nice to when, when the off, anytime this offense gets more creative, it's a good thing. And that's what Harbaugh is all about. And we, when I spoke to Delaney Walker, it's uh, he's one of the guys that will tell you, he's a, uh, what we said, Jack of all trades, gets it all done. Now let's talk about Brandon Jacobs return and what it kind yes. of means to the my Niners. Brother, I mean, by the way, you know, he's my brother, right? Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, your mating name. I forgot about that. <laughs> but let's talk about Brand Jacobs' return. I mean, it's great to have him. He, we haven't seen him all year. We know he's a big body. He's, he's going to be able to help us in that goal line situation and third and shorts. And so I'm very ecstatic to see him. Yeah, the- I mean, I, I am too. I, I don't know. I'm a little concerned about maybe being a little fumble prone, I, you know, kind of yeah. messing with the chemistry. Obviously, he, like Randy Moss coming in, was like a little bit of a character issue guy. I mean, we haven't seen that manifest itself, but he also hasn't played a regular season down. I mean, I don't mean to come in here like Debbie Downer, because obviously I'm, I'm as excited as you about where they're at now, but... You know, I mean, this is Frank Gore's team. This has been Frank Gore's, Frank Gore's team for, what, eight years now? So, you know, I don't – I still want to see Frank Gore on the goal line as big of a body. Yeah, I, too. I just think you, we need that big body that we don't have, and so I think that's where he'll contribute. And we do need him for a third and short, which, you know, I love Gore. But it would be nice to change it up and just see. You know, yeah, it'll definitely be up. interesting to see how it plays out. Yeah, now the next thing is Patrick Willis being named Defensive Player of the Week. Now, this is kind of a no-brainer, right? I mean, this guy is unbelievable, and it seems like he gets better and better. I mean, how that even happens, it's, he comes in and dominates every game. I mean, there is nothing I can say about Patrick Willis. Uh, I mean, I can't praise him anymore. <laughs> no, really? What do you really think of him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just, he's just a great player, and he's got the heart and soul and of that defense, and I mean, he's 
one of the best out there to play the game. Can No one can deny that, whether you're a Niners fan or not. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting because I was really concerned about him coming back from the injury last year. I mean, you know, as, as great as he is, he was a little yes. slower. He was missing a few tackles when he was coming back. I mean, it was he was still better than the alternative. But he definitely, you know, as you've kind of seen his health progress, I mean, you see the speed and you see, you know, the coverage yep. increase more. So that's a huge, huge positive for this defense. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I think he's one of the best inside linebackers in the game. Yeah, pro- probably the history of the game. Yeah. Okay. Good. I, w- I thought you were gonna say no, like Melissa. <laughs> Actually, I don't think he's. Pr- I don't think he's very good. I'd like you know. I'd like him to be benched this week. I think. <laughs> okay. Let us talk a little bit um, about the Bills and what you're thinking about the matchup. I mean, I think the biggest thing is their defensive line is stellar, you know, with Mario Williams. And we're going to have to uh, basically – Staley's going to have to step it up, and we're going to have to basically go head-to-head because they're going to try to stop the run. And uh, I think uh, that's our biggest concern. Fitzpatrick could have a day like Ponder, but I don't expect it. I think we'll be ready for him. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. I mean, the Bills Bills defensive line has actually given – I think they're 28th in – or in rushing yards allowed, which is shocking. But it's one of those situations where you know the talent there is better than the numbers. Um, yeah. And our offensive line, I mean, they, they're still allowing sacks. It's I think they've allowed six sacks already. But the, the thing that I, I just noticed today or, or had read today is they, they only have two, two penalties on the year, the offensive line, one holding call out of for four games I mean that that's pretty remarkable like that's pretty you know mistake free football so you know that coupled with just you know Alex Boone and guard you know that shift has totally worked and I mean they're they're winning those battles for the most part and and you know Alex does have enough time to throw so yeah I still think the Niners should be able to get the win and let's uh let's hope for that yes I I'm hoping as well (laughs) (laughs) all right that is our first down All right, I am joined by Delaney Walker. Thanks for joining Four Downs. Um, first of all, you are a man, I would say you're a jack of all trades. <laughs> you are the guy that does everything. I mean, Harbaugh has you work in sev- 17 different ways in the offense. So what is something that you like as your favorite? Is it you know, catching passes, running routes, blocking? I mean, you do it all. You're on the line, you're in the backfield. What do you like the most? Catching passes, <laughs> of course. Uh, most definitely. Uh, going off of routes and catching passes, making guys miss. Um, but you know, r- really, I, li- I just like doing whatever's gonna help the team out. Um, and uh, that you know, they ask me ask me to do a lot, and and I'm a- I'm able to handle it. So I'm having a great time doing everything. Now, playing all those positions, is it ever hard to remember all those plays and make sure you know the playbook? Very hard, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Very hard. Uh, um, but, you know, I spend extra time uh, with the coaches. I come in early and watch film and get in the playbook. Um, thing is, is just, you know, you just got to memorize it. They give me a lot of opportunities at practice to run the plays, and, and I kind of just memorize uh, different formations and different plays by um, how Alex call it. So um, I'm kind of, I kind of get it down real, uh, got it down good, and, and I think that's why they trust me to do it. I would say so. <laughs> Speaking of coaches, Harbaugh is, you know, bought, brought this team to a different level, and I think everyone knows what a difference he's made. Um, how much of a difference has he made for you? Uh, he, he, he makes a difference. Um, you know, from him coming here last year, just turning the, um, the orga- uh, organization around, just what the coaches he brought here, the attitude he has. He's a he's a type of coach which you would call a player's coach. Um, yes. He takes things serious, but he also have a great time doing it, and I think that's why we buy into his uh, philosophy. Now let's talk about the upcoming matchup against the Bills. Let's talk about what the the role you'll be playing, and how do you think the will match up against the Bills defense? Well, the, the Buffalo Bills has been playing great so far. They got a great defense. Uh, their D line is great. Uh, they got some good linebackers, some good, some young DBs that can play also. So, you know, we're going to do what we've been doing all week, uh, do our, our thing, run the ball, and uh, try to see if we can open up the passing game and uh, just play physical football, and that's basically what the 49ers do. Now, you were born and raised in Pomona, correct? Yes. Yeah, so how excited were you were drafted by the 49ers in 2006 that you were coming back to 
California because you went to school at Central Missouri State, correct? Correct. Uh, I was very excited. You know, my family members are 49er fans. I grew up a 49er fan. And just to be able to come play for the 49ers was, was uh, awesome. Um, being in Central Missouri in uh, Warrensburg in the country for a while, you know, then to come back to the city was great. <laughs> so you grew up a Niners fan. Is there anyone that you idolized uh, growing up? Um, Jerry Rice, I played receiver all my life and I thought I was, you know, I was a receiver and then I got here and they moved me to tight end. So, you know, things happen, but, uh, Jerry Rice was one of my idols. Okay. So we went to Twitter, which your Twitter is dwalk46 and you have a lot, a lot of fans. Um, the biggest question that I was asked was when your contract's up, do you think that you'll stay with the Niners? Cause everyone wants you to stay. <laughs> Say that again. I can't hear you. The, every all the Niner fans, they want you to stay here in San Francisco. So they want to know when your contract's up, are you going to be staying with the Niners? I know you can only say so much, but they want you know you've got a lot of fans. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> right now <laughs> I'm worried about it. Just playing for the Niners at this point. Uh, hopefully, I can put stay here and play for the Niners. I love playing for the Niners, uh, but we got a long season ahead of us, and that's just the least thing on my mind right now. Okay, well, that was the question. Everyone wants to know. Ask him if he's going to stay because we need him to stay. So you just know you have a lot of fans out there. <laughs> yeah, hopefully I can stay. So, you know, stay out there watching this. Uh, ho uh, hopefully I can stay. I uh, love playing for the Niners. All right. Well, thank you so much, Delaney. Good luck this weekend. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Oh, Welcome back to our third down. And this is the down where we kind of go off the field and talk about some things that are kind of special that have happened over the week. And what I thought was pretty, pretty neat is the fact that Willie Mays went to go visit the 49ers and me being a fanatical Giants fan and loving Willie Mays, I thought that was spectacular. He was able to go over there and speak with the players. And it's the first time I've seen Harbaugh really smile for that long <laughs> period of time. He was like all grins. And I know his dad's a big fan of Willie Mays. And so I think it was a uh, really just brought a lot of uh, energy and spark into practice that day. A lot of players were tweeting about it, how to meet, you know, a living legend. And I really love how San Francisco is doing this unite, like SF Unite is the hashtag for Twitter, where the Giants and Niners are supporting each other. And Boach, he wore the Niners hat during a pregame interview to support Alex Smith. And it's really neat the way both of the teams are supporting each other. Yeah, the Willie Mays thing. No, I'm not as fanatical of a Giants fan as, as you. Uh, I, Barry Bonds basically did me in. Um, I used to be. I did, however, used to be. And I remember one time I, when I used to work at KMBR, and I was the executive producer there, and we did, like, you know, one of the fan fests that I know they do every year. And Willie Mays was in a card, and we were taking him on the stage. And it was, like, I mean, we needed, like, 25 police escorts. It was crazy. Like, more yeah. than any other, you know, player, any uh, – it didn't matter who. I mean, Willie Mays is just, like, on a different level when it comes to Bay Area. He is. Things. I mean, he is a living legend. And so they have the 49 jersey that said Mays. And, it, yeah. like, again, I have to reiterate the fact that I've never seen Harbaugh smiling for so long. I mean, he was really excited that Yeah, he, he looked there. a little starstruck, didn't he? <laughs> That's right, didn't he? I mean, he was really, really happy. So I thought that was pretty neat and something we definitely needed to talk about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, the next thing, I guess, is we could talk about the fact that we are going to be attending the the game of the season, you could say, against the, Bills, the Giants. The Niners? <laughs> yeah, the Giants. Yes, <laughs> the Giants game in two weeks. And hopefully we can redeem ourselves in, uh, from the NFC Championship game and get that win, and that will be great for us to be there. I was there for the home opener, and the stick is just electrifying. It is just the fans are just pumped. They want that Vince Lombardi trophy to be back in San Francisco. And uh, I really uh, – it's, it's crazy to see how they've changed over the years. Like when I was a cheerleader for the Niners, it was – you know everyone was so ecstatic about the Niners, and it was so much energy, and then it kind of – tapered off and now it's back the fans are really back again yeah I mean sadly for me being in DC I, I don't you know get so much of it uh, the opportunities but you know we were there at the Saints game last year obviously one of the best games ever sure. um, and it, like I think I'm still sore from like the jumping up and down and <laughs> stomping and just the like, anxiety and and I know that you know this Giants rematch is not going to be exactly the same but I you know I'm really excited to just kind of take that pulse. I'm, I'm actually, you know, I'm bringing my, my Bears fan husband. So San Francisco has to represent because I've been really like pumping up how great the crowd is now. 
And it'll be funny to be on the flip side because we hated Manningham and Jacobs, and now they're on our team. I know. <laughs> it'll be interesting, the reception they get. Yeah. But I think it's going to be exciting. And like I said, just nothing's like being in that stick. And me and Melissa, for those of you who don't know, when we watch games together um, and my dad's with us, we're pretty intense um, from pacing as much as we can in our road to not talking to like, right? I mean, to just. Yeah. And that was, you know, just so everyone knows, that was kind of the impetus of the show is we were just, you know, we were talking. We were so, you know, so intense and we weren't talking and we were just like, what if we just translated this and, you know, kind of talk to each other and talk to the fans during the season that's you know why we're here today yeah and we basically do a play-by-play -play of like each <laughs> right each, each possession we have to like say something we're always you know uh we're very into it there is yeah. uh, we're either we're talking with words or we're talking with our facial expressions <laughs> <laughs> yeah but we're definitely not the girls that are there uh for the wrong reasons just to get drunk and um i don't know go with their boyfriend because it's the thing to do we are very intense like we're part of the team <laughs> yeah although i have nothing to bad to say about beer either just for the record <laughs> <laughs> well you know what i'm trying to get across. i know i know i'm kidding so yeah so we're looking forward to it and uh that is our third down and our final down fourth down is our fantasy down and let's talk a little bit about the upcoming matchup with the Bills. But before I talk about that, I wanted to say that the Niners defense gave me 30 points yes. last week. Yes, 29 so in my league, but yeah, pretty happy. So I got, I got 30 points. So um, let's talk about the defense this upcoming week. Yeah, I think it's you know I think this is another huge opportunity. I mean the the Bills are are, are the two of their offensive linemen are out this week. Um, and I, I just think it might be like crazy, you know, strip sacks of, of Fitzpatrick. I could see a couple of those happening, and he's so erratic as a quarterback that, you know, and, and the defense just has so much momentum. It is like playing a little bit faster and a little bit more, I feel like, turnover aware. Um, so I, you know, obviously we're all starting the Niners defense. I mean, come on. Yeah. Let's, just, let's just get pumped up for it. <laughs> and another person that probably everyone's starting is Vernon Davis. Yeah, I mean, how could you not? How could you not start him? Yeah, I mean, he's one of the safest. Um, I mean, he's one of the safest tight end starts at this point. I mean, even you know, in the sort of Jimmy Graham Gronk category, even though he doesn't get the targets because he's just such a huge, um, you know, he's such a huge end zone target. So you you can't you can't not start him. I mean, there's obviously always the risk that he's going to have one catch for 27 yards, but. You know, well, do you remember? Do you remember what Rex Ryan said before the game? He said that Vernon Davis is he puts him in a more elite category than Gronk. He made that statement wow. and said I that. I didn't know that, really. Yep. Yeah, he did. So that was uh, you heard it from Rex Ryan. I don't know if that's just a little slap in the face of his own division if he actually believes yeah, that. But. I don't know. But I thought it was you know. I'm surprised he said that, but I didn't it, uh, know Rex Ryan said smart things. Good for him. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> now let's talk about Frank Gore. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting with, yeah, it's going to be interesting with Brandon back. I mean, I, you know, one thing is, is Gore has only crossed the 100-yard mark one time, but his, you know, yards per carry is way up. I mean, he's, he's, he's still in his prime. I think we talked about that a, a couple weeks ago. So, I mean, you, you know, he's definitely got to continue to start. Kendall Hunters is getting, you know, involved a little bit more. And I think, you know, I'm a little bit scared that Brandon Jacobs is going to be brought in for, for goal and carries and that. Yes. And what I had said last night, I my, you know, I host a fantasy football show, and mm -hmm. that's one thing I said to a lot of people who are starting Gore. You don't know how Brandon Jacobs could change a little bit of the fantasy point situation with, you know. Yeah, if I would, if I would kind of, up. yeah, if I were to give Gore a prognosis like between one and ten, I mean, I I'd I would take him down from like a starting seven to like maybe a maybe a six just because of, of Jacobs' presence and the unknown there, like you said. Exactly. The last thing is your boy, Alex Smith. <laughs> Why is he my boy? Just because he's a boy. Jersey. Because you wear his jersey so proudly like, all the time. Like, do you think I'm, gonna, like, I'm in love with him? I like, wear it to bed every night. <laughs> I think you do. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about Alex Smith and the matchup against the Bills. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good matchup. I think there's some weaknesses in the secondary to expose. I mean, he's just, you know, again, the same issue is he's not, there's no there's no deep threat. I mean, Randy Moss is not. The biggest thing is that he's not accurate on those long passes, yeah. and he overthrows a lot, and that's a little frustrating. Yeah, I mean, Michael Crabtree has, I think he has 198 yards on the season, So he and he's our best receiver. So that means our mm -hmm. best receiver is averaging 50 yards a game. 
I mean, yeah. that's an issue. And that obviously doesn't yeah. bode well for, for Smith as a fantasy star. I mean, I thought a couple weeks ago that maybe he was gaining more confidence. And I mean, I, I like how they're using Manningham, but we got to get, we got to start throwing passes beyond, you know, eight, nine yards. I mean, come on. Exactly. So we'll hope to see that this week. So I wouldn't I, start I, Alex. Yeah, that's the bottom line. Yeah. yeah. Until that happens. <laughs> All right. So you heard it on Four Downs. Thanks for joining us again, and we look forward to next week. And go Niners. Oh, and I have one final question for you. Oh, great. What? Um, Bonnie Jill, who's got it better than us? Nobody. <laughs> who's got it better than us? Nobody. Who got it better? Nobody to the field from the tailgate party. SFC, yeah, we still G's, but we crushing and hitting every damn thing. If it ain't real, it ain't right. If you can't take a hit, take a hike. The legendary Super Bowl champ said right. A classic connection, Montana to Rice. Field motor section, mission to Diamond Heights. Bayview District, Sunday and Monday nights. That's ball. ball. If the Niners on y'all's, that's the right call. I got one question. Tell them hardball. Oh.